Howdy, Reed Desert Boy here. Hey, I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about, um, you know, kind of the evolution is if you're, if you're, uh, uh, you know, you you're, you have an interest in firearms and, and, and shooting sports and things like that, over time, you probably find that your taste change or your, or your focus goes different. Maybe you started out hunting or Maybe it was more rifle and then shotgun, revolver, maybe semi-auto. You find you kind of grow with it. And I'm a firearms hobbyist and enthusiast, you know. It's just it's, it's, it's something that I enjoy. So I'm just a hobbyist and enthusiast. I mean, you know, a lot of times, too, you know, we might want to look at how we go about carrying our firearms. Now, we always want to be in compliance with all our local, state, and federal firearms laws, regulations, Permit CCW permits training, etc. Hunting rules and so forth. But but I find like for me, you know, I found that things kind of evolved for me. Now sometimes it's a matter of aging. Sometimes you know we are skinnier. Sometimes we're chubbier. So how we might go about carrying things, you know, varies. You know, and it depends on what you're doing. You know, a lot of people when they go hunting and stuff, you know, they like to have a. a a chest rig or something like that because maybe they go fishing too maybe they just got other things with them and they don't want it to be you know in the way of of their carrying their hunting rifle they're carrying or whatever um, other people you know like to have it always on their hips some people like to have cross draw and this is something that you kind of have to work through for yourself talk to your own experts get training you know talk to people that are certified in those areas, make sure you get the proper training with whatever you decide. But I know for myself, I'm just going to share a little bit for myself. You know, when I started out, um, I started out with more of a, a small revolver, you know, J-frame or LCR uh, for me, because that was something I was familiar with. It was something that was, I, I didn't have... Um, you know, I, I didn't have as much familiarity with semi-autos um, until I had more training and things. So that's where I started out. Now I did uh, eventually get semi-autos, you know, nine millimeters, 1911s, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but when I started out, the other part is comfort, right? You, you look at all these different things, right? Uh, first of all, training, make sure you're, you know, you're knowledgeable and understand all the safety aspects of, of, uh, whatever you're whatever you're carrying and so forth but I want to talk more about how you carry it maybe right so I started out uh, kind of being the person uh, I'm, I'm not an appendix carry guy it's up to other people you know you have to figure out what works best for you but for me you know I'm my body type doesn't really support that as well um, and uh, so I always was one to be more where I was carrying in the four or the five o'clock position, something like that. Sometimes getting closer to three, you know, depending on whether it's an inside or an outside the waistband uh, holster, right? Um, later on, I did get a shoulder holster rig. Those are expensive usually if you get a good one. And uh, so, and I have uh, some cross draw holsters, right? But all these things are, um, are uh, something that, uh, once again, what you decide, you also need to practice with, just like you do your ammunition. Make sure you got the right ammunition. Make sure you have the right firearm for you. You need to be proficient with it. For me, over time, you know, like I said, I started out, you know, more or less four or five o'clock, probably carry. I like to be able to reach back there, kind of back out of the way and so forth. Interestingly enough for me, it's kind of evolved where it's moved more to the front, you know, more to like the 1.30 or 2 o'clock position or somewhere there. It's not necessarily an appendix carry, but for me, especially with some of the smaller firearms and the pain, whether it's outside the waistband or not, you know, I, and of course those are usually smaller ones. They're usually something like the Shield Plus, which is one of my everyday carries that I prefer or um, maybe a Smith & Wesson J-Frame um, or my Ruger LCR, right? And the other thing is, is it depends on how, how you're attired. Do you wear a vest? Do you not wear a vest? Do you wear a shirt loosely? Do you have coat? Is it a hot weather? Is it cold weather? Um, 
me, I wear suspenders sometimes, so I have to make sure whatever I've got doesn't get hung up, you know, in the suspenders if I was to necessitate access to it. Um, the other thing is, is also you want to make sure you can, sometimes when you're reaching back to draw, if you don't clear your clothing properly, you know, you could snag a pocket or something like that in your vest or, you know, there's different things. See, it's why it's important that you practice you know, if there's a place where you can practice, you need to do that um, um, to become proficient at it. And, you know, it's just you, you need to make sure that you have what works best for you. And I'm just sharing what I do, right? For me, I like to be able to go to the range. Some ranges allow that, some don't. Um, some people do different kinds of dry fire practice, different things like that. It just depends. But for me, I found that this comfort for me went from kind of being back behind me where I reach back, you know, to where it's more uh, towards the front. The other thing is, is I know the status of the weapon more. I'm probably more able to defend for myself, defend any access to that and so forth. Um, I happen to like the other holsters a lot because I think they're comfortable. However, there's some real good reasons to have the Kydex or Kydex leather combination because a lot of times the um, retention is more positive, they have a click or maybe you do want a re retention holster of some level. Um, leather ones you can also have a strap right that could be over it. These are all things you have to take into account but I just wanted to share that with you. For me it's been an evolution you know. Um, there was a time um, when I was Sometimes I like to have the shoulder holster more uh, a year or so ago, let's say, right? But now I'm back to having it more, like I said, maybe the 2 o'clock position, 1.30, something like that in that area, as opposed to 4 or 5 o'clock, right? And it also depends on where your ammo carriers are. Do you carry a Gideon pocket carrier, which is like for magazines, right? Do you carry your uh, speed loaders if you have a revolver or speed strips in your pocket? Um, there's a, a variety of them from, you know, uh, uh, was it Tough Strips, I think, uh, Bianchi, and especially Zeta 6, I like a lot of their products, um, and HKS, the traditional speed loader. Sometimes you have them in a, a little speed loader case. Some of them straddled your pants or your belt some of them are just on the outside you know it just depends same with mag carriers you know you have to find ones that also have you know proper retention you don't want them falling out somewhere or whatever uh, a lot of people too you have to take into account when you're out and about there's some places where no printing and uh, it being very concealed is really important because that can cause you some serious issues you know and you don't want uh, some people really freak out and reach up to get something on a shelf you don't want things showing so anyway i just kind of wanted to share that with you it's been something i've been kind of going through it seemed like i've been trying different holsters and things kind of got it's not unusual for you just like you might try different different uh carry weapons or you might have different ones seasonally some people like carrying small revolvers pocket carry you know for summertime they like to be able to do that other people, um, you know, they're always appendix carry, or they have one of those that slides down, it's inside the case that you pull out, and it just depends on what's going on. So, you know, and whether, once again, that's going to affect it and so forth, too. So, um, and then you have to decide, and you have to be proficient with it in practice. So, uh, anyway, just wanted to share that with you. Uh, Three Desert Boy always says, be safe out there, whatever you're doing. Remember, always find your experts, get help, get training if you have questions. Do that. Education, very important. Safety is paramount, always. So, Three Desert Boy always says, be safe out there, whatever you're doing. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Bye now.